today I am joined by Dr. Bash, who is here on behalf of RadNet. Well, Dr. Bash, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Now, um, I have talked to RadNet in the past regarding artificial intelligence. And at that time, it was just kind of a thought and they were thinking about incorporating it. But here we are, maybe a year or so later, and it is now being used. And even yourself, you said that you've been using it for some time now. So before we get into how it's being used, can you give me a background about what artificial intelligence really is? Absolutely, yes. Artificial intelligence is thriving within RadNet and really throughout the world. So it's something that we've heard a lot about uh, recently. So artificial intelligence, or AI, is a means of using computers to enhance human thinking. And um, AI doesn't only allow thought augmentation, but it can also improve our efficiency, our work efficiency, our revenue, uh, quality, accuracy, and even safety. And amazingly, uh, AI algorithms can actually learn from their own mistakes and, and keep improving over time, which I think is just fascinating. So the more data you feed, the better it gets. So we want computers really to take us to a place that we can't go ourselves. You know, we'd like computers to um, really improve our lives, our, our health and our happiness, but in a way that's safe and universally beneficial. And so basically we want computers to augment human capacity. And um, AI is playing a very important role, but we didn't really hear about it 20 years ago. You know, we hear a lot about it now. And really the reason is, is the currency of computers, which is data. We now have so much more data. So computers achieve AI by a means of running data through large um, computer generated neural networks. And computers are now sophisticated enough that they can analyze large volumes of high dimensional data and recognize patterns. And amazingly, computers are actually much better at humans than recognizing patterns. Um, and so computers can be taught to answer questions that enhance human, human capabilities. And, and this is really helpful in all areas, but for me personally as a neuroradiologist, I'm, I'm really interested in its potential in improving um, medical imaging. So AI is really poised to revolutionize not just medicine, but really all occupational sectors uh, throughout the world. So all areas of our lives which are impacted by technology will soon be transformed by AI. Well, and, and, and I think that there is some, some worry uh, regarding that. Um, however, before we even address that, one, one thing I do want to address is how RedNet is actually using it. I mean, obviously it's used, as you mentioned, in radiology, but what does it do to, it, to help the radiologist uh, to be able to identify certain things. Yes, yes. Um, so there are many different AI products on the market. Uh, RadNet uses AI products that, um, that work well in an outpatient setting. So I'm fortunate enough to work for a company that's actually the largest outpatient imaging enterprise in the United States. And they're very patient-centric and forward-thinking. So they've always been very open to AI. And, um, you know, they, they're using AI to improve, well, we're all using AI to improve patient care. So I can give you some examples of what we do. For example, we use AI products to help us with billing on the front end. That's something that's very labor intensive and AI can help a lot with that. Um, we work with a, a company, Philip, I'm sure you've heard of that. Then, and we do a no-show program with them. It's sort of a pilot program. Helps us identify patients that are at risk for no-show and we can give them a reminder call. Um, we have a we work with an AI company that uh, allows an app on your cell phone to remind you of your annual mammograms. It can be very helpful. Um, one of the most exciting things that we do with AI is we work with like a company called uh, Subtle Medical Products, and also some of the major vendor GE um, has a product and this uses AI to allow us to scan patients between, I would say uh, 45 to 75 percent faster which is amazing because you know patients don't really like I mean everyone you know all of us generally will go through an MRI at least one in our lifetime but we don't really want to lie still in the magnet for 30 minutes so we can get our patients out Oh, quicker than half the time now, and but yet with improved image quality. So it's a win-win for patients um, who can get in and out quicker. It's better for the radiologist because they have better image quality. Mm -hmm. And it's better for the um, imaging facility efficiency. So that's a very exciting, I mean, that's going to re revolutionize everything. I predict that 
every imaging center everywhere in the world will soon be using AI to do this kind of thing because um, there's just no downside at all. And I personally have been using AI in my uh, clinical neuroradiology practice for the last 14 years. So I work with uh, Cortex and also another company, Icometrics. And these products, Cortex products, NeuroQuant and Icobrain, I use these on patients that have um, potential dementia or seizures or multiple sclerosis or um, brain trauma. And what this does is it measures, uh, it's called quantitative volumetric imaging. And all that means is it's measuring things in the brain and can compare that to a large normative database. So for example, as we age, we all you know, start to memory loss, unfortunately, over time. And the question is, is that just normal aging or could that be a, an emerging neurodementia syndrome like uh, Alzheimer's disease? Mm -hmm. And so these products are very helpful. In fact, our neurologists, once they use them, they will keep ordering them every single time for patients with these indications because it will measure substructures of the brain that are pertinent to things like memory loss, which would be the hippocampi, and then compare that to a large normative database so you know whether that degree of brain volume loss is just normal for age or whether you're sort of outside of the norm for age, which may be an indicator that you're actually developing something like Alzheimer's disease. And so that is very useful. And they also have new developments where they help us to measure brain tumors and, and help in identifying strokes early, which can save lives. So that's a very exciting area. And then we also work with a company called Ezra, which can help detect prostate cancer early and measure tumors within the prostate. Mm -hmm. And then a very interesting new development, uh, RadNet incorporated a company called Deep Health recently, and that um, helps in early screening for um, breast cancer on mammograms. Mm -hmm. It turns out, and this is just amazing, it actually just came out in an article in Nature, but it turns out that the AI algorithm can recognize breast cancer on a mammogram up to two years earlier than um, expert radiologists, which is just amazing. So we can, radiologists can work together with this AI technology and really help save lives with it. Wow, you're right. It definitely will be changing all aspects of, of our world, I think, um, as a whole. So that is, that is absolutely amazing. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier, there are some concerns about that. I mean, maybe a radiologist would say, well, gosh, if that's gonna do that for, for us and for our patients, two years in advance, well, then what am I really still needed? I think a lot of people are worried about that. Yes, that's an excellent question. And it's actually a question I get a lot. And so the, the answer to that is really no. Um, AI is an outstanding tool, but it really remains just that. It's a tool. So AI enhances medical providers' abilities, but it can't uh, replace that human interaction. You know, although AI is better at pattern recognition, humans are really better at global reasoning. So no radiologist that I'm aware of has ever lost a job to AI, and I don't anticipate that they will in the near future. Um, it's really designed to work hand in hand with humans. So that humans do what they're good at, AI does what, what it's good at, and to me, finding that we can do extraordinary things um, you know, when we work together with AI. So you know, as the population ages and, and more and more of us are needing imaging, um, for their health workup and for diagnosis and for treatment planning, you know, we're finding that AI can really improve medical imaging in, in all areas. So it's a welcome addition. It's not something to be afraid of. RadNet always, before we ever adopt a new AI product, we always confirm the, its efficacy and also its safety before we ever use it with patients. That, that's good to know. And then, of course, you said it's already being, it's already being used now. So what would be the future of AI? for RadNet? Well, um, the future is really just, it's gonna continue growing. There are new AI products that are coming out all the time. Um, I'm it happens to be a passion of mine, so I'm very involved with the industry and, and always watching out for things. But it's something that we are going to be um, using more and more in a way that is, uh, when we find things that are beneficial to patients, then we're gonna start using it. And you know, AI products, there are certain products that we don't use so much at RadNet, but that are extremely helpful like in hospital setting where you have more acute critical findings. So AI products, for example, triage products identify neck fractures and pulmonary embolisms, which is a, a clot in your um, arteries, in your lungs that can cause you to stop breathing. Mm -hmm. and, um, and other things like that, it can identify that earlier like brain bleeds and then mark those studies stat 
So it reviews the images before it ever gets to the radiologist. And then it, when the radiologist pulls up their work list, they see a stat study that the AI has said, okay, hey, listen, there's something abnormal here. Look at this quickly. And then we can then call the, you know, the team and interpret it. And again, that can help um, save lives. And with the strokes, you know, we've now found that this AI technology, not only does it find, so a stroke is basically where you have a blood clot that, you know, blocks an artery in your brain and then causes those brain cells to die. Well, it's very, very important on the timing for strokes. You want to treat immediately because we can actually really help for every one minute you go without brain uh, blood flow to your brain, we actually lose 1.9 million brain cells. Wow. So the AI technology will find the clot and within six minutes, it will actually, th this particular product I'm talking about, will alert the entire stroke team. So the neuroradiologist, the neurologist, the interventionist, everyone, and we can get that patient on the table put in a like a clot retrieval device and remove that clot and the patient can wake up perfectly normal again and so um it's been so there are very very exciting ways that ai is helping to save lives and and that's just going to keep getting better and better as technology improves and that you know innovation improves wow well that is that is certainly a lot of information and and i mean i really enjoyed hearing all of that and i look forward to learning more which is which is great and and you're a wonderful speaker so thank you so much for sharing that with us well thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure